gosh, are you okay, little kitty? Kitty, not okay. Just make sure these rusty tools don't harm you, or I have to give you a tetanus shot. Tetanus? Yes, kitty, tetanus. An infection worse than your worst nightmare is a subject everyone must know. Hey friends, so in today's episode, let us spread awareness about this life-threatening condition by answering a life-saving question. What causes tetanus? Zoom in! We love to run barefoot while playing outdoors. But while doing so, we increase the chances of stepping on something pointy like a rusty nail lying in soil, which can be home to a harmful bacteria called Clostridium tetani that is responsible for causing a severe infection called tetanus or lockjaw. In this condition, a person can lose control of their nerves and muscles ranging from minor jaw locking to extreme full body spasms so hard that even your bones can break apart. And worse, if tetanus is not treated in time, it can be fatal. But the vital question is, how could these tiny bacteria cause such a dangerous condition? Well, for that, first we need to learn few things about them. Clostridium tetani is a bacterium that usually lives in soil, rusty metals or dirt. The family of these species is anaerobes, meaning they can't survive in the presence of oxygen around them. That's why they prefer to live in deep compact soil where there is low or no oxygen. But when they come in contact with fresh oxygenated air, they begin to reproduce and generate spores that, unlike their fully grown counterparts, can survive in oxygen-rich environments. And this is where it gets worse for mammals. Yes, when these spores manage to enter our body through a cut or open wound, the low oxygen condition of our body serves as a perfect environment for these spores to germinate and produces living tetanus bacteria. And in the process, the spores also release a deadly neurotoxin called tetanospasmin that is responsible for causing the body spasming tetanus. How? Well, that's pretty interesting to know. You see, once the bacteria keeps expanding its population and releases more and more tetanospasmin toxin, it enters your bloodstream. Then it travels all the way to your central nervous system, which consists of your brain and spinal cord. And inside your spine, you will find different neurons, such as excitatory neurons, inhibitory neurons and motor neurons. The role of the excitatory neuron is to take a message from your brain, turn it into an electric signal and transmit it to motor neurons. Then these motor neurons carry those electrical messages to your muscles and ask you to make movements such as running, swimming or snatching candy from your sibling. But these excitatory neurons keep sending these electrical signals to your motor neurons that keep your muscles moving. And that's when the inhibitory neuron comes into picture and stops the motor neurons from moving your muscles, reduces their force and asks it to relax a bit. But when tetanospasmin enters this system, it binds the receptors of inhibitory neurons, creating a blockage and breaking its connection with motor neurons. This gives excitatory neurons a chance to function without any opposing forces, making the motor neurons fire continuously 
which causes the muscles to contract repeatedly until a spasm occurs. And when that happens, in worst cases, it will cause the victim's back to arch, which can be fatal at times. But the vital question is, how can we protect ourselves from this disease? Well, first and foremost, if you get cut from any metal, make sure to visit your doctor ASAP and take an anti-tetanus vaccine shot if needed. And you can also help prevent tetanus by protecting the bottoms of your feet by wearing thick-soled shoes or sandals while going outdoors. Trivia time! Did you know tetanus symptoms start about 5 to 10 days after the injury, sometimes as long as 50 days later? Yes, the early signs of tetanus include muscle spasms in the jaw. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Until then, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. <laughs> Never mind.